Stewart, in my opinion, show with Ronald Barry Robinson and friends, seen on the internet 24 hours, 7 days a week to access. Go to our very own channel, type in in capital letters, R-B-R-I-M-O. You can also reach us through YouTube and Google. You can also view our programs on Flint, Michigan, Comcast Cable, Public Access, the Public Access Channel 17, every Saturday at 6 p.m. and every Wednesday at 8.30. You can also view our programs on Detroit uh, Public Access Channel 68, seven days a week. I want to welcome my co-host, Mr. Henry Hatter. Welcome, Ron, and again, uh, Denise, uh, we're so proud of you. Your granddaughter graduated from Howard University, one of the best black colleges in the nation, one of the best colleges in the nation. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we're proud of that. Keep up the good work. Thank you. And welcome to you, uh, Miss Denise. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Henry. And welcome to our millions of viewers worldwide. <laughs> Let's talk about Memorial Day myth. Memorial Day has African American roots. First one was conducted by former slaves. Seems like giving black folks credit for anything in America except crime and poverty is controversial. And the origin of Memorial Day is no different. Some want to say it started out as Decoration Day, which was started in, no in northern states in 1868, or that the first Civil War soldier soldier's grave ever decorated was in Warrington, Virginia, on June 3, 1861, implying the first Memorial Day occurred there. However, in my opinion, laying flowers on a grave doesn't meet the standard. The overriding consensus is that the first Memorial Day was organized and held by former slaves in Charleston, South Carolina in 1865 to honor Union troops who lost their lives in the Civil War and were buried, buried nearby. Here's the part that's not true. The first widely practiced observance of a, of a Memorial Day type observance after the Civil War was in Charleston, South Carolina on May 1st, 1865, during the war. Union soldiers were, pr were, were prisoners of war, had been held at the Charleston race course. At least 257 Union prisoners died there and were <coughs> hastily buried in unmarked graves. Together with teachers and missionaries, black residents of Charleston organized a May Day ceremony in 1865, which was covered by the New York Tribune and other national papers. The Freedmen's cleaned up and, and landscaped the burial ground, building, up, building an enclosure and an arch labeled Martyrs of the Race Course. Nearly 10,000 people, mostly freedmen, gathered on May 1st to commemorate the, the war dead. Involved were about 3,000 school children nearly enrolled in freedmen's missionary, excuse me, in freedmen's schools, mutual aid societies, union troops of black ministers and white northern missionaries. Most brought flowers to lay on, on a burial field. Today, the site is used as Hampton's Park. Years later, the celebration would come to be called the first Decoration Day in the North. This was the first Memorial Day African Americans invented Memorial Day in Charleston, again, in, again in South Carolina. What you have, what you have there is Black America. Shoot, what you have there is Black Americans recently freed from slavery, announcing to the world with their flowers, their feet, and their songs what the war had been about. What they basically were creating was Independence Day of a second American Revolution. So there you have it. Uh, uh, this is good information for, you know, for Memorial Day and for Black History Month. So uh, as we celebrate recently the Memorial Day, hopefully uh, people will go to their computers and find out uh, for themselves uh, about this little known black black history. Any any uh, any any comments on, on black history on Memorial Day? Well, <clears throat> first of all, that was something that I had not heard before. So that's good information. That's good information. So I think that that should be something that um, is shared with um, you know uh, the community, um, all <coughs> communities. Mm -hmm. So. Everybody should be aware of the contribution, and I think Memorial Day has probably evolved, you know, starting from that standpoint onto something that is recognized as a national holiday. But I think about Memorial Day. I think Memorial Day is really a kind of a personal day, in my mind, my opinion. 
that you reflect on uh, your uh, loved ones who have passed on. Um, certainly you can think about members of the family who are military as well, but I think it's, it's broader than that. I think that it's a time to reflect on uh, the ancestors, the family members, uh, friends, people that touched your life in some way. So, um, you know, thinking about that, one of the, th the thoughts that I had, I didn't do it, but I had a thought to do it. Uh, downtown Flint, there is a, a memorial uh, set up for uh, soldiers and I have done it in times past, but I just didn't do it this uh, Memorial Day past. Um, but it's to me, that's a time again to reflect on the soldiers who have uh, fought in wars, some of who um, are the real unsung heroes who don't know their stories, but you know they gave the ultimate sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know, their life for uh, being a part of the military. But again, uh, family members, friends. I, you know, I think about uh, the passing of my own family members. And it's just a, a reflective time. And I think that you know, we, we, we get caught up on the celebration aspect and people want to have barbecues and cookouts and all of that. But there should be a time to reflect. You know, If you want to socialize, that's one thing. But you need to also be a little pensive during that time period. You need to reflect on those persons and the contributions that they made in your life. Absolutely. Well, what are your thoughts, um, Mr. Uh, well, Rudd? Uh, you're looking at two well-informed uh, persons sitting at White Thunder. Where White Thunder Avenue, I never heard that before. Neither had I until I I learned um, something mm -hmm. today, as Denise had said. Mm -hmm. that, and that's, that's wonderful to hear that. And I can see why that became a probability at the, uh, for those times. Black people in those days had the most to, to feel ingratiated by and people who sacrificed their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, and I can see them uh, probably laying graves on uh, their soldier boys who died uh, sometimes without mercy mm -hmm. uh, to uh, provide for their freedom and stuff like that that they had long hoped for. But I think, like you said, Denise, that this evolved. It started from the military perspective and then uh, I think later it became uh, part of the way we celebrate the death of all of our lost ones or passed on from time to time. But it was, uh, the problem with this is we look back that we're criticizing society for not giving us uh, credit for that. But it, look how creative it was. They did something very, very creative that had never been done before. Mm -hmm. They respected the dead, the ones who fought for causes mm -hmm. for which they lost their lives. And <coughs> yet, it didn't become the big holiday until it was proclaimed by an institution. Mm -hmm. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Mm -hmm. That must be the, the, the sweep of the, the rod that legitimizes that as a holiday and that was done by President Wilson was it at the first world war I think I read something like that okay. I think that President Wilson did it in the second world war I apologize to all of those people in the audience who know the answers and I'm floundering here okay. but that means we're on the same side mm -hmm. but I, I like the idea I do celebrate uh, Memorial Day I decorate flowers on my and uh, I not only do that on Memorial Day, but I go out periodically and <coughs> put flowers mm -hmm. on my mother's grave, my dad's, my sister, my wife, mm -hmm. or anything else, my wife, my, my son. So I have a reason to celebrate, and it's like you say, Denise, a personal thing I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do it for personal reasons on those days, mm -hmm. and other days I do it because it's a group celebration of of the war dead, and we have to say a lot about the dead who sacrificed their lives to make sure that we were free of that. Absolutely. Well, also too, uh, uh, and I agree with you know with, with both of you, but uh, you know let's take this to another level now. Uh, mm -hmm. I know these soldiers died, you know, for cause and so forth, <coughs> but we still have soldiers dying for causes and so forth right. as we speak. 
you know, as we've been inundated with news of the Veterans Administration lately, the disaster is horrendous, okay? It's a sad history that, as I know firsthand, a number of people that have served in Vietnam and Afghanistan and Iraq, okay, you know, you give the ultimate, all right, whether it's your life or your limbs, okay, or your mind to preserve democracy, if that's a word that we want to use, okay, to uphold the values that we hold dear and so forth, but doggone it, all right, it acts, you know, in many instances that it appears that the Veterans Administration doesn't give a damn about a lot of our soldiers, men and women, based upon, you know, recent news accounts, and, you know, and it's ridiculous. You know, they come back, they need health care, they're physically damaged, psychologically damaged, mentally damaged, they need rehabilitation, they need, you know, they need care, and they're not getting it, and, you know, and this is ridiculous, and I don't understand, I don't understand it, and the guy that's in charge of the Veterans Administration, you know, he ought to be run out of town. I think he has been. Okay, well, I hope so, because I know the people are up in arms, okay, and that's a good thing, but he's not in it by himself, because there's a whole lot of his administrators, all right, they ought to lose their jobs, too, okay, and doctors, and psychologists, and psychiatrists, all right, that allegedly have cooked the books, you know, you know, on these people. All the people want, these soldiers, men and women, all they want is help, all right, help to get back to, hopefully, a state of reasonableness, and for years, they have not been, they have not been getting this, and I can, you know, and I have proof, based upon my conversations with some of our veterans, and whether it be in Saginaw, whether it be in Ann Arbor, whether it be in, you know, Walter Reed, it's just, it's just, it's a... Ron, I'm glad you mentioned that, what was going on in the Veterans Administration. If you want to get Americans outraged, then disrespect the soldiers, and I think that people come forth, irrespective of their age, their race, their gender, their belief system, their religion, they all come with anger, and, you know, soldiers are, as they age out, they become throwaway people, just like all of us do over time, but soldiers, we owe a commitment to them for what they did when they sacrificed themselves in the war to assure that a free and democratic society would go on so that we can enjoy it, but I believe that the President has said that the chief of the Veterans Administration is too much of baggage to keep anymore, and even the chief agrees that he was too much of baggage and resigned, but, and they appointed the Assistant Secretary, who knows a little bit about the administration, and now, this is a learned guy, because he would not want to go through the scathing criticism that the director goes through right now, so rather than bring someone in new, I think the President did the right thing, he's brought someone in who was, who knows what ought to be done. But wasn't that person, you said the second in charge, right? Yes. Well, wasn't... He was part of the problem, right? Exactly. Okay, but still, would you bring someone in that don't know what they're doing at all? Right, because you got a learning curve. You got a learning curve, and you don't have time for that. There's too much damage that has already taken place, and right now, as you say, some more hits should roll and will probably roll. We won't see that in the headlines, but I'm sure that it's going to occur, because this thing was systemic. This was longstanding. This didn't happen yesterday. This has been going on 
and said, and years and after years a while, the leader, he would have learned the lesson. And so that second thought. in charge, he did he not. Thought, he would have thought know. that. But, you know, when you're dealing with large bureaucracies, you know, the wheels of change are ever so slow, you know, and someone has to make an outcry. And I'm so glad that, you know, they've been doing um, incremental exposés, Walter Reed, um, 60 Minutes. They just did a repeat of a show. Um, are the veterans who have the, wound, the wounded warriors, the ones that have come back with mental uh, issues as a result of the war, you know, and they've gone back as far as the ones that were in Vietnam, and they also have the ones that have, are in the most recent war, in Iraq and what have you. And it's showing you how, you know, damaged they were and the term new therapies that they, they're um, engaging. But the whole idea is we cannot allow people who have sacrificed so much to be, un you know, not treated in a hospital for mental or physical disabilities. They should not have to wait months for anything. Mm -hmm. They come back, they should be at the front of the line. You Absolutely. know, if there's anything that should happen in terms of jobs, in terms of anything, they should be at the front of the line. I don't have a problem with it, and no American in their right mind should have a problem with it. And the Romans always did that for their soldiers. When they came mm -hmm. back through the portals, you know the portals in Rome? Mm -hmm. They came through those portals, and they were offered everything that Rome had to offer. Mm -hmm. To well, be and celebrated. That's and this is what their soldiers should be celebrated. We used to mm -hmm. have a ticket day, day, uh, ticket day parade mm -hmm. in this country, because mm -hmm. I remember um, seeing movies of flowers being thrown down from the tall buildings in New York mm -hmm. at the end of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. I don't think that happens anymore. No, well, it definitely didn't happen during the Vietnam War. They were disparaged. They were treated very poorly. Well, I don't think it happens today. Yeah, well, you know, there's, there's nothing happening. You know, there's no real, you know, you have a handful of people that meet folks at the airport or whatever, but, you know, the mass support of those coming back after deployment, you don't see that. You just don't, you know, and that's a shame on that's us. That's why. That's how things can get out of sorts. Mm -hmm. w and the next generation mm -hmm. of leaders mm -hmm. will soon forget this, and mm -hmm. we'll have to go cycle through this again. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should have term limits on people who serve in that capacity. Mm -hmm. Ten years, and then you know you need to uh, re revolve out for a um, for uh, ten years. For five years, <laughs> or for a year, just so you that you keep, out period. keep, just so <laughs> that you keep this kind of an issue uh, at the forefront. Right. So that you know, it, it, and it's shameful that you know that 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 that's shameful, disgraceful that thousands of of, of, of our veterans have had have died, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and and will die because of because of this incompetence. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely agree with that. And you know, and I agree with you. You know, to a certain degree, in terms of you know, the, uh, this person that knows or should know should know, uh, you know, the, the the inner workings and the policies and procedures and the protocol of the uh, of the Veterans Administration. But even at even second in, in you know in command, you would think that you know uh, 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 he would have alerted he would have alerted uh, you know uh, the head guy to resign. You you don't challenge you know what the mean? boss. And but besides, sometimes you have to. But, but, sometimes but, you have yeah, to. Yeah. I challenged my boss. You know, when I was uh, when I was working before I retired several times. Yeah, I caught hell absolutely. But I but I felt good about it. All right, because I knew I was right. Ron. Yes. If you are getting information from your subordinates and you are expecting yeah. them to give you yeah. honest yeah. information, yeah. That's, that's what you have to go yeah. by. Because you're not all, you can't be at all of the veteran right. hospitals. You cannot be there at all the staff meetings, et cetera, et cetera. So you're looking for good information yeah. from the people who are in those positions. And if they give you wrong information or you know misinformation or actually just flat out lie to you, what are you to do with that? What are you to do with that? So yes, you know um, the head of veterans, he took the fall. He took the fall. And perhaps he probably could have done a little bit more investigating, but by that mm -hmm. time this thing has blown up. And so now, you know, he's no longer in that position. But the person who's in second in command, because this is such a hot topic and it's such an emotionally charged issue, you can believe that that guy is going to do his very best to make sure that there is more accountability and some people are going to lose their jobs and they're going to streamline functions and they're going to get those people who were on a roll so 
somewhere that fell off the rolls they're going to deal with them first you know it would be in their best interest i'll say it like that let's hope and you know the other thing supporting what denise is saying is that if you brought in a new person that person's going to be driven by the fervor and the enthusiasm and the exuberance of the public who thinks that you ought to go in and really just cut heads off and slice people into pieces but get the job done that is not the proper way to go after methodically changing a uh uh a despicable position you have to have people who are knowledgeable who are uh stable secure and know what the issues are and won't pick off the staff and will take the information that's out there that's useful and convert that is uh information into an action strategy well you know that to a certain extent but you know sometimes you got to put that foot where it belongs you know just say okay right up that old whatever you got to put that foot where it belongs okay and 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 especially in a situation like this all right uh these people are dying for us all right they have died for us their families the families you know have suffered the children okay they're suffering look at the commercial just here on tv all right men and women no legs okay uh uh arms blown off um uh head injuries um i mean i mean the list is endless right you're making us look bad okay it's endless well we should have to even have to if the shoe foot if the shoe fit wear it you know what i mean but i'm speaking about and we about, agree with you and i'm speaking about yeah. you know the these these you know our 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 brave soldiers and women all right that 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 give the I'll give the give the ultimate all right <coughs> even the other day uh i got a um 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 i keep in contact you know with my high school and so forth all right this was uh back in the uh, vietnam days and <coughs> uh three of my school my uh high school uh 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 um uh, graduate i mean class cla- uh, uh uh classmates got killed mm-hmm. all right mm-hmm. and when i was in the, the veterans memorial on the wall in washington dc i looked their names you know i looked up their names all right i mean and you know we played basketball we played football we ran track Mm-hmm. All right. Uh we went to the senior prom and all that kind of stuff. Mhm. Mhm. And for what? Mm-hmm. They died in vain in Vietnam. Okay? Mm-hmm. Went over there for a bowl of rice. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. More or less. Okay? Mm-hmm. Got ran out. Mm-hmm. We well, you know and then and then and then this idiot put us in in another in another war in Iraq. Mm-hmm. All right? For what? What 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 was the game? Right, right. in the worst of situations okay. there's always another side of that. Well, I can't see it. I can't see. Okay. I can't see the other side. But please I mean, be be um uh cognizant of the fact that yes, we lost, but there were some good things that came out of it too. Well, yeah. That's why we got well, that's another story. That's why we got all these screwed up roads and bridges and and everything cuz we even sent trillions of dollars over there, <laughs> build up their country, all right? in Afghanistan, okay? Mm-hmm. We get run out of there. Mm-hmm. The Russians got ran out, okay? <laughs> so now uh uh tens of thousands more American lives uh, lost. For what? For what? Mm-hmm. It's you know, it's 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 it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. It Let is. these damn politicians, all right, to tell mm-hmm. these damn lies, all right, to geek up the American public, uh to send uh our troops over there, you know, to die, send their send their sons and daughters over there. All right? I bet you you can't find on 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 one hand, all right? All 435 of of, of them rascals and the representatives in 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 100 in in Congress. I bet you can't find five of their sons and daughters, all right, in combat. I bet you. All right, you But, folks out there do some research and and check it out for yourself. send you know let's send some of their uh uh loved ones to war and maybe they wouldn't be so gung ho all right in creating uh these all this havoc and telling these lies but Ron this just let me conclude with this yes. <clears throat> there there is a legitimate reason to go to war and uh we have to look at balance of power in the world we have to look at resources resources that we need to maintain the lifestyles that we have the quality of life 
That's just the way it is. I won't say that this pertains to all those veterans who were underserved there by the Veterans Administration, but there was a legitimate reason to go out there, and, and it's unfortunate that some of them were hurt and killed and, and uh, damaged as badly as they are. Well, my question is, what was a legitimate reason, am I right, for uh, uh, invading Iraq, other than a damn lie, am I right, that uh, Bush told? Okay. What? Two, three years later, two, two or three years earlier, all right, uh, 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 Daddy Bush was partying with Saddam Hussein. Okay. No, Ron, we know that things have changed since well. then. The Iranians came out and said, we have to bomb, and the Koreans said, you won't attack us now. A lot of things evolved after that Bush administration, and you know, we, we need to drop the stuff. You That's why his know. ass is in obscurity right now. All right. Yeah. All right? Nobody, you, nobody wants to hear from him. Politics makes strange bedfellows. Yeah. You know? each, each chapter, mm -hmm. as it unfolds, you'll find. But yeah. don't disrespect yeah. our veterans. I, I know yeah. you're not. Oh, no. Yeah, no. veterans have paid a price yeah. regardless of the and politics. And we're trying to give them regardless the, the ambience that they deserve. Okay. This has been but another great conversation, <laughs> and then all too uh, uh, soon it, was, it has come to a close. But this is uh, uh, Ronald Bear Robinson and friends saying, for the In My Opinion show, stay focused.